Hi folks, welcome to Sunday's edition of the iWrite Radio podcast, uh, stroke videocast. Um, this is of course the morning of uh, the Mars show and depending on who wasn't out the night before, Scottish politics show is uh, chaired by oh, anybody that wasn't out the night before. Um, we're going to have a look at a Mandy Rhodes article. Um, Sawaz has got a piece in The Guardian. Uh, Wings has, I wouldn't call it devastating, but has pointed out how many times the Yes movement has been marched to the top of the hill by Sturgeon and how many times they've had to find their own way down again. So will, will we kick off with the TV stuff? Jimmy? Yeah, um, I, I kind of zipped through my mate. Um, a lot of it wasn't of any interest to me, um, other than to point out England are in a really, really dodgy situation with their NHS, um, their numbers. And I noticed <clears throat> both the press and Ma tried to be positive about things. The press in particular were full of positive front pages but mainly because that's what the Tory party desperately need at the moment because the numbers aren't looking they're looking horrendous in England frankly and if they're lucky the English NHS won't implode in upon itself in the next couple of weeks but I'm not certain I think they're winging a prayer time um, the Scottish stuff brilliant interview with Jack McConnell fair play um, Lord McConnell um He's, he's beautifully dressed these days. That 1500 two grand a week that he's getting for sitting in the House of Lords is obviously <laughs> quite well, and his tailors are getting a fair bit of it. But what, what a lot of nonsense he speaks. <laughs> Let Phil in to absolutely eviscerate him, because I didn't want to eviscerate Jack McConnell. He's, I find that dull, but Phil, rip him. He's, he's Phil's oh. mate. Sorry? I'm saying he's your pal. No, I can honestly say I don't think I've ever met him. If I had days, he's, he's, he's that charismatic, you know, that I can't remember. Um, but I do remember the the black... Pinstripe. Pure-ish, whatever, yeah, the pinstripe. Yeah, but see, he couldn't quite get it right. He needed a good clutch bag to go with it, you know. Um, mm. I'm sorry, anybody coming out of the House of Lords now, I mean, very rarely, I mean, just... And it's surprising the people that have gone in there from Labour with, uh, um, well, the one that coined the phrase vermin in ermine itself, you know, John Prescott. I mean, they're all in there. Um, no, uh, McConnell. No, neither here nor there. Not my kind of leader, thank you very much. Sure. I caught Sophie Ridge, watched the whole show rather than start with Mar. So I only got the last bit of Mar. Um, they tend to have, have the same guests and topics, so it was Dominic Rab on talking rubbish. Uh, yes, the, the general tone is to cover up. The, the question that arises is, even the media down south, is um, it's very short term. I mean, there is no election coming up, so why do the government care what the, the public think? Uh, let, why don't they just barge on and pretend to be irresponsible and all the rest of it? I don't get that. Uh, it's populism every day. I preferred, I thought the Scottish politics one was more interesting, watching Gary Robertson. As soon as he came on, I knew fine it was going to be rat tat He talks too fast for the sake of anybody. He allowed McConnell to say, Anna Sarwar will be the next leader more or less, and the claim that Arnas Sarwar was made uh, middle of the road instead of, uh, you know. Uh, Gary Robertson never challenged any of the, not one of the answers that, that McConnell gave, not one. He did push it on a bit about uh, independence, but then allowed him to say, you know, what basically Labour have to say, um, oh, we're going to concentrate on everything else but independence. The most interesting guest that Sophie Ridge had, and I gather it was repeated because other people were telling me later in the morning, uh, was James Comey, the former head of the FBI that uh, took on Donald Trump for the Russian 
corruption uh, charges. Comey said, and I found this important, he said, when you know Donald Trump personally, you understand he is a, a menacing man like a mob boss. And I know all about mob bosses, he said. I, I saw him on Newsnight this week as well. He's very good. Trump's finished. That's not an idea. It's not an idea that the Americans or our media want you to buy into, but Trump's finished. I mean, what can you do? imagine how, man, how much evidence is going to come out after Wednesday about how much money his family has filched from the American public? He will lose all his support within the first six months. He's losing it now. Yeah. Right, but he's, he's still, he's, they still go on about him having 70 odd million votes. You'll forgive me, but out of that 70 odd million, how many of them voted for the ticket, not the man? That's yeah. what people, Americans do. They, they've only got the two choices. I think the fact that um, Comey came out with the line, and he's not the first important person to come out with it, uh, they don't want to press ahead with impeachment because that's liable to go on for three years, and that will allow Trump three years of television live from the Washington. Uh, I said last week, mate, Biden didn't expect to win the House, the Senate, and the White House. That's a remarkable position of power for any politician. He's not going to want to waste any of that time by giving Donald Trump any oxygen. I think, that, I think it's hard. They, they can't just stand by. They can't simply say, yeah, it's okay for a president to incite insurrection. They've got yeah, to do something. I, to let the it press do it, mate. The press are the most vicious. The American press are vicious. As soon as they start showing them evidence of the money that's been stolen, and there's bound to be because that's what Trump's done his entire life. So you're not telling me that he didn't use a remarkably powerful position to, to enrich himself and his family. And you just un show that to the American public. They hate thieves, mate. The, the New York State Attorney, they're all going for him. Um, and the, the big, his biggest problem is, as I said, Forbes, who basically um, all these businesses, Forbes is a business magazine, that they're, they're dumping Trump. They'll have nothing to do with anybody that has anything to do with Trump. He's lost all his contracts in New York State. Uh, his hotels are closing. He owes 300 million to probably some shady Russian banks or that. No, he's doomed. <laughs> can you I say doomed twice, mate? It would have worked better. <clears throat> and, uh, can I Sorry. drag us back to the UK a minute? Yeah. Um, has anybody else noticed that all we talk about, all the mainstream media talk about, sorry, that was a Freudian slip, the we. Aye, aye. Uh, you're the mainstream media spokesman. Um, is the vaccine, because the only good news is the vaccine. Um, and they, they seem to have decided that the Scottish government, because they're doing it slightly differently, as I think all the um, devolved administrations are, um, can be SNP batted on it. Uh, I've heard very little. Newsnight did a very good piece this week on the hospital situation and how near they are to crashing. But the mainstream media seem happy to run with headlines about super duper numbers being vaccinated, etc. That's because Conservative Central Office are begging them to do so. They want them to run good news stories, not bad news stories. And frankly, the, the only way that they can SNP bad us on vaccinations is to say we're not doing it fast enough. And the simple answer is get us more vaccine and we'll do it faster. Stuart? I just and, wanted to... to no, it's good, Jimmy. No, I just wanted to have a wee mention of um, Sarwar and McConnell before we moved on. And Labour's line, McConnell's line, now it was a good one. Fair play to Jack. I don't know if he came up with Excel or if this is going to be Labour's line completely. But when asked about the polls and asked about the stupidity of their position that Scotland doesn't want an independence referendum, regardless of how, how high the number is for yes, McConnell's line, and it is not a bad one, when asked a polarised question, people will give a polarised answer. Uh, I quite like that, but um, the reality... I think you're right. Yeah, the reality of those is very different. People want independence for many, many reasons. But 
And the number who think there should be a referendum in the next year or so, next couple of years, is about 70%. I'm sure it was 67 the last time I seen it poll. I'm glad you brought that up, word, the word polarised, because that was the only bit of um, pushback between the two of them, between Gary Roberts and, and McConnell. Mm -hmm. uh, McConnell actually uh, was rude, turned round and uh, said to, you shouldn't be talking about push, uh, yeah, polarised. You asked, no, uh, you asked a polarised question so you don't get an answer. No, what he, what he said was, you ask a polarised question, you get a polarised answer. Well, you shouldn't be asking a polarised question because you'll just get a polarised uh, answer. Sorry, you're just, right. It's just st it's stupidity. Why do Labour, honestly, why do Labour think telling more than 50% of the electorate that what they want is daft and Labour don't want to talk about it, so we're not going to talk about it? How do they, can they possibly think that's going to be electorally successful? If you say it often enough, if you keep saying it, somebody might believe it. Phil, they've, they... been say, Phil they've been saying it since 2014, mate, and they've just fallen further and further in the polls. Well, McCon they'll, find in they'll find out in May. They'll find out in May. McConnell did also say that he was quite happy for uh, Sarwar to have a coronation. Yeah. yeah um, I'm not surprised at that, mate. They didn't want Monica to stand um, for obvious reasons it just makes it easier for them if they can turn around and fair play to them they've made it an awfully tight um an awfully tight timetable basically you have to declare if you're going to stand by midnight tonight i'd love to see somebody who's almost unknown somebody young from the left wing of the party to stand just to make sure there can be a coronation and then just stand up and say by the way i personally believe in independence and I think Labour should be going down that route because that would make for a wonderful campaign. And frankly, Sarwar would probably win, but he'd be so wounded at the end of the campaign that they might finish fourth in the election, no third. Are we not kind of in a, in a strange place now where winning is coming second? What the unionists are actually fighting over is to be the opposition. Mm -hmm. Um. I, 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 I don't get it. I actually don't understand why there isn't a, a left-wing independence party. And I, yeah, I'm I sorry, think, I don't think the Greens are. Oh, no, they're not. I think you're right. I mean, it was, it was in my mind. It was obviously, I would say it's in your mind as well, Jimmy, when you said, you know, we, we could really do with a left-wing independence party. As well, part of, it would be SSP. healthy for the democracy. We mm -hmm. had one. The SSP. SSP. They had six seats. Yeah, but unfortunately, they, they spent Tinted. far more time navel gazing and trying to destroy each other and seeing who was the biggest yeah. ferret in the sack, see which one of them was the biggest shite house than they ever spent on actually acting like a political party or representing any of the people that voted for them. They did ruin a good opportunity for the first, you know, the, 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 the left wing, the socialists in Scotland. That's the best window they possibly had. And uh, well, they wasted it. It, wasn't it. One yeah. person wrecked it, was not it? One person. Well, that, that, that rainbow... The bee's knees of everything. That rainbow parliament probably could have been something very special when you look yeah. back at it. But unfortunately, it was ruined by idiocy and, frankly, greed from certain people who yeah. were really only there to fill their own boots. So, will we move on to Holyrood Mandy? Yes, could yes. do. Yes. I, I thought that was a beautiful choice of headline, what about the women? Because the article actually wasn't really about that. But it would get an awful lot of people from both sides of the argument to read her piece. Um, I, I do have sympathy for the two women for a lot of reasons, mainly for the fact that the Scottish government has let them down horrifically and Leslie Evans let them down horrifically. Um, if they felt that they were harassed at work, if they felt they were put in awkward positions, clearly I have sympathy for them. But it wasn't about them, that article. Mandy Rhodes was basically firing a warning shot at the leadership of the SNP. Get this sorted. Uh, the quote, I mean, after uh, what we all know is what happened. There was a an investigation, an internal investigation. Then there was two court cases. And we know where we stand on that. 
But what she says was, I'm heartily sick of hearing Sturgeon repeat the poor woman playbook that she's been punished for the behavior of a man. I'm offended by her batting off attempts at scrutiny over whether she lied or not, with a reminder that this is about salmon and not her. I'm appalled by the claim that our chief of staff, Steve Chief of Staff, allegedly revealed the name of one of the complainants to someone who used to work for Salmon. And I'm flabbergasted by a permanent secretary who didn't insult the woman's complainants about mediation, took the case to the crown over their heads and presided over a ridiculously cursory investigation. Yeah, I think in the middle of that, Stuart, you got to the crux of it as well. The fact that Leslie Evans didn't consult the complainants about going to mediation. And the reason that Leslie Evans did that is because she knew they would bite the hand off at that point and would sit down in a room with Salmond and his representatives and sort this out. That's the last thing Leslie Evans wanted. She wanted to ensure that Salmond was brought down by this because that was the brief... Well, I can't say that was a brief given to her by her boss, but I've just said it, haven't I? I'm, uh, I'm still not convinced, boys. I'm getting more convinced, but I'm not convinced. Le Leslie Evans. Remember, Nori, I didn't is, point out who Leslie Evans' boss was there because she has more than one, doesn't she? Yeah, I know. But my problem here was I can understand that she'll be under an obligation to report to the police anything she considers criminal. I mean, that'll be part of her remit as he did the civil service. In, in order that criminal things don't get brushed under the carpet mm -hmm. as much as anything else. So she may not have had as much wriggle room as people are presuming she did, but not to give the offer of mediation to the women who were complaining, that was definitely within her gift. Yeah, and I, I would have thought that was an obligation upon her as the yeah. person who had the final decision read what was going on in this entire um, investigation. Well, if it's, all, if, it's all, to say this. if it was all supposed to be about the women, mm -hmm. every option that was offered should have been put in front of them for their opinion. Oh, yeah, I think oh, there's a couple yeah, of things yeah. I'd like to mention, mate. The, um, the, the collusion between senior civil servants meeting up for a couple of hours at a time before, particularly before Leslie Evans went into the Parliamentary Committee. Um, it, it adds another layer to the smell, as does the apparent coaching of witnesses to the committee. Um, I understand they maybe needed legal advice, but where does legal advice stop and coaching of witnesses begin? That in itself could possibly lead to another investigation, possibly right. by the Law Society, because the solicitors that have been brought in to assist absolutely 100% know that they are not allowed to coach witnesses. So I Is think this it inquiry be... run under the same laws as a court case? No. So is there anything that actually says you can't coach witnesses? Well, that would be an interesting legal point, and perhaps that's why the Law Society should be brought in to check that out. So I'd trust the Law Society to investigate a hell of a lot more than I would trust the civil service to investigate themselves again. So, but breathe routinely, coach the defendant or the witness if you're there. That's it's that's not a, a, a so, story straight. There are very strict rules on what you can and can't do, though, Phil, aren't there? Well, you can't, you can't, you can't have a situation where the coaching involves another witness statement. I wouldn't think. So you couldn't have three witnesses sitting in the same room being coached at the same time. Mm. I, as I say, mate, that I just there's an unhealthy whiff about everything, and frankly, it gets. The stench gets worse the more that gets revealed. And we are told by Mark Hurst, Stuart Campbell, Craig Murray, that we're, we've only scratched the surface, that there's a lot more to be revealed. So I worry that the stench will become overpowering at some point. So now we know that we get all these questions about uh, what, what, what was the motivation for uh, 
the, the reason, what was the reason to go ahead with this investigation and in which started off this whole thing? And let me read out what Manny Rhodes says, because she's closer to the truth than most of us. Encouraged by a sympathetic civil service, keen to be at the fore of the global movement that was exposing allegedly wrongdoing and speaking truth to power, these women were to be the first test drive a new complaints process designed by the Scottish government, signed off by Sturgeon, and which included for the first time, and against the advice of quite well mandarins, complaints raised against former ministers. It, it, and when that went wrong, you see there, you can see that that makes logical sense. There was little evil intent at that point. Well, there was evil intent. They were wanting to use tittle tattle to destroy a man's career and his reputation. To me, that's evil intent. Well, perhaps they did actually believe some of the early ac I accusations. Think, I absolutely think they believed it. But I think, um, given some of the people who made the ac who came forward, I absolutely think they believed it. Um, unfortunately, their belief has been shown to be wrong in a court of law, and everything they <laughs> and everything they've done to drag it to that court of law well, and everything that they've done since, and particularly using public bodies like rape crisis to cast dispersions on the verdict, disgusts me intensely. Well, that, well, that is appalling. I mean, I think, I mean, Stuart, the point that Mandy Rhodes ra uh, raises is interesting, that it started off as a, a woker than woke um, issue. You know, Scotland was going to be at the forefront of doing down these nasty misogynist men. Yeah, well, not only that. And case then it didn't. turned into something else. I mean, I've I've always thought for a conspiracy, it was very badly organised, and as I've said many times, I think it was a smear that just grew legs. Um, I don't think they ever expected it to get to court. But the wokest thing feeds into the. The, the, some of the stuff I've heard about just how, frankly, misandrist some of the people at the top of Holyrood are. Um, the, the desperation to big themselves up and become part of the global Me Too movement, in fact, to become leaders of it, that's still no excuse for taking tittle tattle and turning it into something far, far worse. And when frankly, the money that's been spent, you know, with public money's tight now, we moan like hell when kids get shit fed to them instead of decent food. How many school dinners would all this money have bought? It didn't have to happen. It was the ambitions of gone radical, it was the ambition of radical feminists within the Scottish government that started all this. And uh, none of them, not one of them are yet to have been held to account. Judith McKinnon, Nicola Richards, Leslie Evans, not one of them has suffered. In fact, they've probably, well, they'll tell you they've suffered. They'll write books telling you they've suffered. But every single one of them is getting paid massive salaries. And not one of them has at any point in time been asked, other than by Mr. Salmon, to consider their position. Because they made a complete balls up of this. And they're the ones that pumped all that money up against the wall. Phil, uh, it's well. The title you were talking about. What about the women? Quite a lot of women on the on the jury, wasn't there? What about them? Uh, of course, they don't count because they're not probably the right kind of women, you know. Because yeah. they women now aren't women. Um, they basically have. Well, you have some have CIS, whatever that means. Yeah, I, mm. I think that's women. Women. Uh, yeah. It, I, I mean, sorry. It's just ludicrous you know and the thing you're saying about feminists actually an awful lot of feminists are described as what's the word they use turfs yeah because you've got to be uh, the right kind of feminist as well now nobody will tell me that uh oh god mind the aussie woman from germaine Wayne. greer germaine greer now a feminist or what call her anything else she'd probably kick it up and down the high street yeah aye, aye. she's a turf I mean, all these people, you know, uh, I mean, 
it's like the lunatics are taking over the asylum, really, just about everywhere. <laughs> if, 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 if it wasn't such a cliche, you could say it's political correctness gone mad, Phil. Yeah, okay, yeah, 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 definitely. I would, at this point, like to distance myself from... Um, okay, let's move on to Anasawa's piece <laughs> in, oh, uh, in The Guardian. Now, Anasawa's is... Um, I was, going to say, I was going to say wank finder general in charge of the Labour Party. Um, but it appears that Anas is going to end up being another millionaire leader of the Labour Party. His, the title he's got for his piece, I mean, and this is it. I mean, you could almost boke, or dry boke at least, you know, uh, hypocrisy. Scotland needs unity. That's why he spent the last three years with the henchmen undermining the leader I elected, who was then kicked off, thanks to Sawa and all the other ones, all the right wing, you know, usual suspects, right wing, labor rights, unionists, uh, no surrender types. And then two millionaires, Keir Starmer, um, uh, our, the only Labour MP and a few others decided he's going so we can get some money off these millionaires because they don't want the money off the trade unionists that are all leaving. But he gives you a whole load of garbage about why he's here, how he got here, all that sentimental stuff, you know, uh, which actually means nothing. But it says, this is the bit, this is the one paragraph. Over the past few years, I have gained a new perspective on our politics and realised that things we argue about mean little to people's lives. We spend too much time highlighting our differences rather than focusing on what unites us. I'm determined to bring our movement together so that we can rebuild our party. All right. I'm party. in a beauty contest and I want world peace. The next Labour leader. <laughs> if you'll just excuse me, I'm just going to throw up for the next five seconds. Mm. Uh -huh. the You're right. Oh. It reeks, utterly reeks of hypocrisy to describe himself as the unity candidate after being front and centre in the campaign to bring down Richard Leonard and yeah. actually having journalists on his payroll to yeah. write attack pieces for him. Uh, yeah. No, I'm just saying, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in a beauty contest and of course I believe in world peace. That's, you know, right. That, that, it's, about as, it's about as weighty as that, isn't it, Stuart? Um, it was a, push. It's just... a laughable piece, and it was noticeable that even Gary Robertson said that it was short on policy. I think that describes Anna Sarber throughout his entire political career. He's there because his old man was there and climbed, climbed to the greasy pole mm -hmm. that was Glasgow Labour and then handed over enough cash so that his son could get a job in Glasgow Labour too. Um, I think... The what well, it just I, it was same old same old for me. It was like standing in an echo chamber, going back five leaders. Right. <laughs> five just, leaders. You know, you no, seriously, the, it was the same nonsense. Somebody lined them all up for a photograph. Star Trek, the Star you know, Trek photograph. How many what, leaders what they have they need had? To do, what they need to do is find a leader who doesn't want unity. They need to find a leader that's a dirty street fighting working class bastard. And possibly a leader that actually wants to lead, i.e. take the party in the direction that he thinks of, rather than the direction that he's been told is a place to go by London. Well, I, I mean, to me, it's, oh, it, it's not even a branch office now. No. I mean, why are we getting angry about it? Because the, on one side, we, we all, three, all four of us probably would like to see a, a proper socialist party so, with powers supporting independence. But on the other hand, the weakness of the Labour Party means most of those potential voters vote for will vote for independence and vote for the SNP. Yeah, but it also, it also means that even if they only poll 20%, if, oh, I don't even think they'll poll 20% in the election, Stuart, but when they poll 20%, that 20% of the population of Scotland are being absolutely unrepresented the, the Labour Party does nothing for them whatsoever. Anna Sarwar, Christ, he talked about the poor in his um, observer column. He doesn't pay the real living wage. 
No. He pays his staff shite money and works some long hours. Why does he do that? Because daddy done that. That's how daddy made his sell a millionaire. He's a shite house and he should be treated as a shite house. <laughs> Oh, Sharon, read what you're saying. Say what you mean, Jimmy. Eh? <laughs> uh, Sorry, mate. I couldn't resist that. I, I, I felt it coming up and I tried to hold it down, but like you, I couldn't hold it in, Phil. <laughs> any, any chance at all that anybody will stand against him? Uh, no, well, actually, how many are there? There's not many to choose. Uh, mm. And I suppose anybody to the left of it, Attila the Hun, would be monstered. Do you know what I mean? So uh, <laughs> I think he'll buy it, mate. I think if Monica... Well, if Monica Lennon's the only serious candidate, I think Monica will get herself 50 grand or that just to sit down and shut up. It struck me that, it, it struck me that um, what, you Richard was bribed to... He was threatened to go, that he would have to go, but he was also bribed and he was guaranteed top of the list central. in the central region so that he would, be, he would be able to stay in the parliament. Why wouldn't you say that was a guarantee? It's... On the list, oh, they'll get somebody on that. They'll, they'll, they'll definitely get a left test. They won't be completely mm -hmm. wiped out. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but what I mean is, if, Sawaz, their best intentions. if Sawaz operates like his old man, once he's at the top of the tree, he'll do what he wants. So I, I don't yeah. think Sawaz, I mean, Jimmy, you made a good point about it. they need a leader. I think Sawaz thinks leadership is telling you what to do and you'll do it. Yeah, I, I, I'd say That's that as well. That's the impression I get. Um, that's not, that doesn't work. That's just because you employ people and pay them and they'll do what they're told. Apart from I think, that. I think, though, that Richard Leonard's deal was done with Keir Starmer on the phone. So if Mohammed Sar sorry, if Mohammed Sarwa and Anna Sarwa think that they can take the leadership of the branch office and the first thing that they do is go back on the word of Keir Starmer, it could be the shortest Labour leadership in history and that would be doing, that would be gone some. Do you think Keir Starmer really gives a toss about Scotland? No, but I'm afraid the Daily Record would make it a front-page story if Richard Leonard got pumped. And the last thing Keir Starmer wants is any distraction from his um, shiny, cleaner-than-clean image. And this would look nasty. This would get dirty and it would be covered by it, the National. It's interesting talking about the Scottish pro-Labour media. Uh, I don't think they've made up their mind yet whether they want Gordon Brown back to lead. He can't. He can't. Well, not officially, but to lead the uh, campaign, if you like. Well, they really, really, I mean, not only would they kill themselves there, they'd actually bury themselves before they bloody well died, if you bought Gordon. Yeah. It was, it was interesting to see a couple of pieces from London hinting towards Gordon Brown leading any, any referendum campaign. I remember reading one that said that Brown was still respected and what have you up here? And I thought, Jesus, when's the last time you were up here? And then it turned, turned out it was written by somebody that lived here. And I'm like, Chris that's Beaver. a really weird bubble you've been living in. Chris oh, no, the fan club. He's got a fan club, all right. I can never understand it. He just Yeah, looks... but his fan club in Scottish Labour is the only fan club he's got. Yeah. Respect for him is in it, the is general it, public. Is it not just the case of the last big beast left standing? Ah, you might be right. Well, I mean, dinosaur. I mean, he really he, does fit that cartoon image of a dinosaur, doesn't he? Gordisaurus. That's what it mm. is. Gordisaurus. Right. Okay. We've slagged everybody else. <laughs> well, we haven't really slagged <laughs> anybody. You know? Anybody want to have a pop at Tross? Douglas Ross. I, I see he's gone into hiding of late. Um, Gosh. I, I wonder I wonder why that is um, between him and... I, I did see something this morning on Twitter, I don't know if you've seen it, John Lamont, saying that his, um, his inbox was absolutely rammed full of people complaining about having no idea as to when they're getting vaccinated and can the Scottish government get on with that. But there were some beautiful, lovely replies back about, well, your inbox hasn't got anything for fishermen in it, John. I'd imagine that every Scottish story is hiding because they have no idea how to address what's happening to the fishing communities. Um, we had Dominic Rabb this morning hinting yet again that there'd be compensation. But it oh, and really it was nothing to do with Brexit. Yeah, it's nothing yeah. to do with Brexit. It's just teasing problems. Aye, teasing problems two weeks down the line that mean at the moment 90% of boats are tied up because it's no worth their while fishing just to get, bring the fish out of the water and watch uh, them die. And the, and the ones that aren't are going straight to Denmark. 
Uh, yep. I'd, I'd, I'd imagine the, the uh, extra run over to Denmark kind of ham- hammers your profitability a wee bit the way. Oh, well, but they're doing all right in Ireland. Well, even well, Northern, they can put, they can just uh, they can take their fish to Northern Ireland. They don't even need to go to the south. And it's actually uh, been muted. It's now legal for West Coast boats to go and register in Northern Ireland. That's that's fine for the uh, the pelagic fleet, mate. But for the the inshore boats that do the um, shellfish, they can't get over to Northern Ireland in the boats, can they? Well, they probably can, but it's a risky run. And I wouldn't think langoustines, lobsters, and stuff like that was a standard Northern Ireland diet. Sounds no. More like no, that's oh. really not my point. That's where it goes. Uh, otherwise, it's just yeah, but no, that's it's, it's talking about, about maintaining a route, direct route to Europe to the markets, and they've increased the ferry sailings from the south of Ireland. It takes a hell of a, it takes too long, sure. It would take too long if the Scottish if the Scottish shellfish was being shipped from the east coast of Scotland. It would still not, take too long. I'm not suggesting it would be shipped from the east coast to Scotland. I suppose if they're fishing it on the it, east coast, they'd have to t- land it on the east coast. It takes too long. It has to go in. It has to be frozen. Well, sorry. It has to go onto the wagons, go down to Dover, get right across to Cali and down to Boulogne in 24 hours. We couldn't do that if we were shipping it for here, and they certainly can't do that shipping it for Ireland. What they have to do at that point, if they're going to ship for Ireland, is kill it. And sell it frozen. And at that point, it gets twenty percent of the price that it gets live. Okay. Oh yeah. If they if they if they've got two, if they'd have two ferry crossings, if they landed it in Scotland, but if they land it directly into Ireland, put it in the lorry there, live, and they've got ferries running direct. Aye, but the ferry takes too long. <sighs> it's, it takes it takes two and a half times as quick as long to go from Ireland on a ferry than it, in fact longer than that than it does for Dover. Sure, Oh, there's no getting around. Well, that's, that's, that's pretty obvious. But the ferries on the UK mainland are getting shipped. Uh, they're moving Stenner, Stenner it is, yeah. They're moving uh, new, bigger ferries. They're getting moved across to Ireland, right mm. south, to the southwest, from Dublin. The Hollyhead to Dublin trades dropped by 70%. British ports are just going to dry up. Because we don't make, we don't make anything anymore, um, and we can't sell anything. Um, I mean? Langoustine in a basket in every pub in Scotland. I, I, I mean, I'd go for that, mate. But unfortunately, Mr. Scottish public, wouldn't they? Norrie, do you remember back in the day, way back when we were still before the Brexit debate, and just what a laughable proposition it was when somebody said, "If all this comes to pass, we're going to need forty thousand new punters at, at custom." <laughs> I wonder how many they've actually got. I mean, I'm pretty sure 40,000 maybe was an outlandish number, but they've certainly not got anything like what they need to make this work. It was sad. I mean, the last figure I heard was something, I, it was high. It was like 20,000. Uh, think about think Think back 10 years. I, I'm sure you, none of us had ever heard of a, a border force, a UK border force. What was that? It didn't well, exist. Do you know, I mean, the, the customs guys are a bit like the Polis and the fire brigade. Gets passed down from father to son. And there's a, a family that and I played rugby with one of the sons. Um, and there was, I mean, they were a big family. There was about eight or nine of them employed as customs officers. And most of them sat at the door to bonds, whiskey bonds. Aye. Well, well, it used to get a house. It used to get a they used to get accommodation on the, the, the distilleries in the Highland. Well, the remember, got accommodation. It, it wasn't an onerous job, but no, it, no, it was, it was, but it was a good number, none of mate. them, none of those guys, none of that family are still in that trade. None well, of them. remember just how many people were in that customs and excise office at York Place. It's a bloody hotel now. There used to be hundreds of them in there. So they obviously needed a lot of admin staff to do what they were doing. wonder where they all work now. All work for the Tory party. Um, are we? Uh, we're not too bad for time. Yeah, I've got. Uh, I want to bring up. I want to. I'm thinking about the headline for today's show will be not another one, and we're not talking about not another election. We're talking about not another front page of the national, promising 
another independence referendum or a plan for another independence referendum, Wings absolutely t tears them apart on that. There is no defence. Yeah, I think um, I think that. I'm, I'm sorry, that is just ridiculous. What is? Tell me how many general elections there's been. There's been a Holyrood election and three general elections in basically six years. What were the SNP supposed to do? Ignore those elections. <laughs> That's about pro man, as far as I can see. Why can't you have it? Well, why can't you have it at, at the same time? They do, they run multiple elections. They like to run so them all in the same day. What you what you were looking for is uh, an independence referendum, while all the opposition parties were concentrating on national elections of one sort or another. Not it, uh, because you would have needed their agreement to do it. The whole idea that we could have run an independence referendum in that time is nonsense. I, I kind of agree impractical. with you on that one, but that's not what the front page is about. The front page is about a commission, a talking shop, to talk about planning yeah. for an independence referendum. And, and we've been promised that. that. But that's not we've what's been true. promised that 20, 30 times in the last six, five, six years. Yeah, um, and I'm not uh, actually, the, most Im the more important point that I took from that is, was just one line for Wings. Why on earth is any independence commission, or whatever they're going to call it, going to be producing policy papers. There's a body in place within the SNP to produce policy. Are they just going to be producing papers because the, the leadership of the party don't like the fact that that body has now been taken over by people that aren't under their thumb? Well, I mean, I, my reaction was, of course, uh, quite clearly that uh, this was this announcement was a reaction to the takeover of the NEC by actual members and not the leadership. I think it's a front page designed to um, fool the Yes movement yet again. And it's to make sure that people are on Nicola's side. She's given us stuff. She's going where we want to go. Well, if she was going anywhere and liked where we want to go, we wouldn't need an independence commission to tell us what our policy is going to be on independence. The policy would be set in stone. The party would know exactly what it was going to do the minute they win the election in May. Frankly, the fact that they've done no work since, I believe, 2018 on their independence policy reeks. It stinks. Nicholas wanted to put this on the back burner. I wouldn't go as far as, how, as where Stuart went on Friday. Was... I would never use that word about her. Well... But I will, say, I will say that she lacks the courage to take us to independence. And there are people within the party well, guys, I'm that really glad, absolutely. I'm really, really glad you're not in charge of the SNP. I may, I've never wanted to even be a member of the SNP, never mind. Because yet. none of you are looking at the reality of what's happened in the last six years. There has not been time. There, there has, has been no space. And the SNP had no decision over timing of any of it. Not it. Theresa May did. Been, David Cameron did. And if Boris there hasn't Johnson. been time or space, why did she twice ask for a Section 30 order? A politics, she's won a refusal. So she can say you've refused us three times. Every time we get a mandate, you refuse us. Playing politics, Jimmy, I'm sorry, but that's what politicians do. The idea that there was any space for an independence referendum since 2015 is utter shite. You know, uh, the SNP didn't have to hand them an election in 2019. True. When are you going to start arguing about over the colour of the bloody toilet paper at headquarters? You know, you've got less than four months to go for an election. Is there any chance you're, that within that four months you'll actually be able to go out and electioneer? No, Phil. No, Phil. What we should be doing is arguing about when the next independent referendum oh, should so be, instead of campaigning for the next election that we know will be in May. Oh, and in May... You'll, for, you'll, forgive, me for, you'll forgive me for saying, I didn't have any interest in campaigning. I'm not a member of any political party. I don't have any interest in campaigning for one. So to tell me to shut up because I should be campaigning for a party is idiocy. Wait a minute, I'd also, Jimmy. I'd also, I'd also Nobody point told out. you to shut up. That, that's, that's all I'm getting for Phil. Feast for Indy. No, 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 it's not. It's You all want independence, but 
you're spending all the time fighting. So you've got people that might go across. There's definitely people that are going to go across, but they're looking at you and you're just kicking 10 bells out of each other. Well, um, it's, it's a tweet. You are ignoring the possibility, the po strong possibility that the current leader of the SNP doesn't actually want independence. She's shown no evidence apart from what comes out of her mouth that she actually wants independence. Well, that's like the prospective Labour Party leader that doesn't believe in socialism. So what? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, you've really bought their sweet line and sinker, Stuart, haven't you? She doesn't believe in independence, having spent her life in the SNP. I know. I would say the evidence was stacked against you. Well, think back. Think back to... No, no. Think back Take to the last seriously referendum. seriously what I've just said. Yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell think me back when to the she last... had a window. Think back to the last referendum. Now, I, at the time, we had 30% on the polls. And, OK, we got up to 45, 46, 47, even some say 51% before the, the referendum itself. But in that two years, because you and I campaigned for two years, that campaign lasted a very long time, at, at what point was the question of a three-question referendum dropped? Because at, there was a point where a lot of people would have settled for Devo Max. When, uh. when Salmond put Nicola Sturgeon in charge of the negotiations for the Edinburgh Agreement, that's when it was dropped. When Salmond crossed Sturgeon crossed the SNP, got Cameron to believe he didn't need a third question. And at that time, we came very close to having Devo Max on that poll. Yeah. And I believe the SNP managed to keep it off. Well, I'm not certain that uh, <laughs> a lot of people, perhaps including Nicola Sturgeon, would have settled for that at the time. Well, well, I, she I was agree. negotiating the Edinburgh Agreement on behalf of Alex Salmond, I find that a very difficult conclusion to agree with. She was absolutely instrumental in making sure there was a two-question referendum. But that came from the top. She wasn't at the yep, top of I the time. I agree with you. I think she wants independence. I just think she's a coward. I think she's absolutely been grabbed by her husband, who's a gradualist in almost everything that he does. And I think they, they worry that um, Scotland would go down if they had a referendum and lost again. I think that that premise grabs their thinking. They worry that it would go down the Quebec route and it would be gone for a generation. This isn't going anywhere. England is only going to treat Scotland worse. I said last week, we're the only whipping boys they've got left. They can't blame Jory Foreigner. They can't blame the Irish. We're the only people to blame for their country being a basket case. And can Jimmy, any of you, Jimmy, see Boris Johnston and the Tories around about him, actually turn an England if, around into a success? If we lose the next referendum, England, Westminster, will ensure it's impossible to have another one. I think it's a, already on that basis, if, if you're going Sorry, down you, that you, road, you, Dory, you, it, we're already in that situation. The, the idea, look, how many people poo pooed us when we said, look at this new building they put up, Queen Elizabeth's house in Edinburgh, and filled it for, with civil servants. These civil servants were supposed to have been brought all over, all from existing jobs all over Scotland, and they were just bringing them all together. It's now proving that that's not the truth. They are actually yeah, what, what going evidence, to take over what, direct What evidence control. do you have for that statement? They are actually going to, they've announced that they're already starting a fund which is bypassing the, um, the Scottish government to support no, communities. No, no. no, no, that. What evidence do you have for the statement that these are new civil servants that are here to do England's bidding? They're not. Of course they were brought from other offices. None of them are new positions. I'll wait and see. I, 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 you know, I'll definitely wait and see before I accept what you're saying, Jimmy. You've been saying it for quite a long time. As Get for... Paranoia here. <laughs> as for... England legislating to rewrite the Acts of Union, because that's what they would have to do. That's what they're going to have to do to deny Scotland its independence and the possibility of independence. They're going to have to write a new Act of Union and push it through Westminster without the support of the Scottish people or the Scottish Parliament. That in and of itself would shatter the Union 
and I don't see anybody other than somebody like Jacob Rees-Mogg that's got the balls to even try it. They've got the Brexit blueprint, Jimmy. They've got the internal market, Bill. They're, mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. testing that, that, the water big time. They're absolutely testing the water, but look at people, look at who's driving it. Boris Johnson, Jacob Rees-Mogg, these are intellectual pygmies. We should be tying them in fucking knots. The fact be, that we're not... Be is care, Jimmy, be, caref be, be careful of uh, saying these people are stupid or they're not clever enough. It's the people behind them are. Just because the front pe people in front are idiots. Yeah, but we should be tying them in knots. We should have people like Joanna Cherry standing up every day and saying, that part of your internal market bill is illegal and challenging it. Why are we not doing that? And there you go. Because Nicola huge, doesn't want huge. a legal challenge in case she loses. The All huge. Nicola is interested in is keeping power. Yeah, but I think power Jimmy, has gone completely to her head. Jimmy, you're talking what? about the wrong thing. It's got nothing to do with Nicola Sturgeon. She has no power now. The Constitution can be rewritten. The British Constitution can be rewritten every two minutes. Britain doesn't have a Constitution. Every t exactly. exactly. Every doesn't time mean. the government wants something put into law, it does it. There is nothing to defend us against a Tory government. Nothing. Not Aye, Holy we, Rood, we're either. not challenging any of it, Nori. We've got 40 odd, MPs, 40 odd MPs that do nothing in Westminster other than make a noise and collect massive sums of money and huge amounts every single year in expenses. Which is why we want independence. Yeah. But, but, so why are we doing expenses, nothing about it? Expenses go to pay their office. Why are we doing... Well, right, staff. Uh, it's not expenses. Oh, I'm going to put in a large expense account. I imagine some definitely go at it. But Phil, expenses pay their second mortgage. That's not an office. That's no staff. Yeah, they didn't need none. None of them need two hooses. But the bulk of it goes for their staff and their offices. No. John Nicholson has two houses. He has one in London that he owned before he became an MP, and he collects no money towards it. John Nicholson is not a typical MP. No, most people, most people that get elected to Parliament don't own a house in London before they're elected. Mr. O'Neill bought a house in London, and he got it on an interest-only mortgage. So the government paid the interest on the mortgage. So it was tiny because there was no ownership involved. Handed it back. Said to the government. Right, I've made X amount on this inequity. You can have that money. He wasn't allowed to give it back, and they changed the rules so that you're not allowed an interest-only mortgage now on expenses. So they've actually <laughs> set the system up to put money in their pockets. Of course. Right, guys, that's coming up an hour. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Phil, Stuart, Jimmy. Bye. Thanks for listening, folks. And feel free to make comments. Stuart reads them. And we'll catch you all. <laughs> oh, you put me right in the frame there, eh? Now we'll they know. Ca we'll catch you all on Monday. Thanks yeah. for listening, folks. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Me.